Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. Today's episode, it's kind of a big deal. I'm Mark Frechette. And I'm Scott Guerin, the research and development chef here at Modernist Pantry. Was that long pause for the terrible pun? Yes. Okay, yes. I earned that. Uh, today we're talking about something I know is actually near and dear to your heart because yep. you're such a fan of kimchi and, mm -hmm. and just in general the topic of fermentation. Uh, now I know you're wondering his credentials on, because you know him as a chef and all that, but you, you just, you make your own pickles, you yes. make your own kraut, you make your own beer, yes. so you're an expert. Uh, in addition to all of the chefly things, <laughs> yes. um, fermentation. I, I, I know like a enough about uh, fermentation to, to be able to talk about it, and and we have two uh, airlocks here that are um, different but similar yeah. in, the, in in the sense that they allow for the safest possible fermentation that you can do at, at home. Yeah. Um, without having to get a lot of extra equipment. Uh, these are, are really nice because you have the kraut source, which can go on the top of any uh, mason jar. Yeah. Um, and then we have the Sterilock, which also goes on the top of any mason jar, but as you can see, they're very different. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about, we, we've actually got a plan for this one, we're not making it up as we go. Uh, today we're going to talk about fermentation in a few steps. We're going to talk about your vessels, uh, we're going to talk about pebbles, we're going to talk about prep, and we're going to talk about sanitation. Mm -hmm. uh, along the way, we're going to tease some recipes, and we'll tell you exactly where to get those, although if this isn't your first episode, you know the answer already. It's going to be blogged on modernistpantry.com. So let's talk a little bit more about these, 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 um, the vessels, and specifically, I guess, the top of the vessels. Yeah, so, so when you're doing any fermentation, you, you want to be able to keep the oxygen off of the, the surface of the, uh, the food that you're fermenting. Sure. Uh, sometimes it's just with the liquid, you know, but then you have, you have yeast that's in the air that could potentially, you know, gather on top and, and yeah. make this white film. And, and sometimes that's okay. If there's a little bit, you can scrape it off and, and uh, put a little bit extra salt right on top to salvage it. Yeah. Uh, but then there's also things like mold, uh, whether it be white, bluish green right. or black where you kind of want to throw it all away. We, we don't want mold that develops on top of our, our ferments. So these uh, keep the, the CO2 coming out yeah, but also keep any oxygen from going in. And we'll talk about the kraut source first since it's right in front of me. Uh, <laughs> there's a little moat of liquid and if, if Cole could go to the, the top down camera we can see the little mode of liquid, I just put uh, white distilled vinegar in there. Sure. You can put regular water in there. I like a little bit of uh, acid in there. So if anything that, you know, for any reason, some yeah. oxygen gets back in, it has to pass through that. Uh, and it also keeps this water, if it's a long-term ferment, yeah, yeah. from molding or getting any yeast on it. Good so, call, man. So uh, as, as this builds up, so what I did is I, I take these jars and I sanitize them. Uh, you can do that either in a high temp dishwasher, sure. you can do it uh, on the stove in a boiling pot of water, uh, or some people like to do it just with like a vinegar spray, like yep. uh, distilled vinegar, uh, depending on you know your preference, it's, it's okay. Uh, and then I, I make sure that everything around me is sanitized, I wear gloves, I, I uh, clean the vegetables of, of any debris. I make the recipe as it calls for, and you can find recipes at yep. blog.modernistpantry.com for not only our pickles, but for kimchi. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about what you can do with those in, in a bit. Uh, and I place them in the jar. Obviously there's a lot of salt content that goes in. And one big thing is that people sometimes like to make quick pickles. And what a quick pickle is, is they like to boil vinegar, sugar, and salt, and then they pour it over these and put it right in the refrigerator. That's yeah. not a lactic acid pickle. Yeah. What these is, um, so lactobacillus, which is the bacteria that will eat up uh, the sugars and then create the acid, yeah. uh, the acidic environment, uh, will keep these pickles, you know, fresher for longer. And that's where the preservation comes in here. Compared to like quick pickles, which have a very, very, fairly quick shelf life. And if you make them your own uh, I mean, they, they could last for a little bit longer because you're pretty much just pouring vinegar already on them. But the acid that's in uh, a distilled vinegar is very different from the acid that is created naturally. Uh, this is a lactic acid, and that is a malic acid. Got it. So, um, or if, excuse me, the acetic acid, malic oh. acids from certain uh, fruits. Go ahead. I was gonna, I was I gonna apologize. correct you on that, but I was like, I'll just let it slide. Um, all right. So, and and and. Now, when we talk about the actual lids themselves, there, there's two really different ones here. We've got the crowdsource, which I think is more of a, more of the traditional with the water lock, and then mm -hmm. we've got the Sterilock. Yes, so the Sterilock's very easy. Uh, both of these are machine washable. Uh, you can you know, put them into the boiling water too briefly just to sanitize anything. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily let them sit at the bottom of a boiling vat of water for a long time, but, yeah. but they, they can withstand the high temp uh, for the sanitation process. 
And I like to use these in two different ways. With the Sterilock, if I'm doing something like uh, cucumber pickles or, or a short pickling process in about a week, I know I can put it in there. I can visually see exactly what's happening to my pickles from the outside. Uh, and the top on it, it doesn't give me any indicator that you know oxygen is coming out, although I know it is because Let's I can see, see what's going on. There's bubbles yeah. forming and whatnot on the inside. It's a little bit more difficult with something like a kimchi, which you'll see it you know, bogged down and all the liquid that's on top is all very acidic right uh, but right. I can't really see in there and see how you know my cabbage is doing or how my carrots are doing or how yeah. my daikon is doing so with this I like a short-term pickle something I can take and leave it out for a day put it in the refrigerator for a week and boom yeah. I have half sour pickles uh, with the the kraut source I can see because this allows for oxygen to come out and this will actually come up and go bloop and then you'll see a little bubble pop up right there. Easy enough. So so that's what it's doing. It, it's, it's showing me, yes, the, the CO2 is coming out. Uh, and with this, this is a longer term ferment. This goes sometimes more than a few weeks. And if you're making something like sauerkraut, which you can let go for six, week, six to eight weeks, depending yeah. on what um, flavor you like from it, because the acid will change over time in sauerkraut, I like this because I can really gauge, okay, is this still going? What's happening with my, my ferment here? Whereas the Sterilock, you can do sauerkraut in it. Yeah, if yeah. you do it a million times, this is a, a, a little bit cheaper, so you can, boom, get one of these, toss it on, you know your time frame. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But if you're new to it and you really like uh, to, to see the activity, go with the crowdsource. Yeah. Both of these are really amazing for fermentation. Uh, one more thing that I want to point out with the Sterilock is <laughs> if you are going to be doing the uh, Sauerkraut, which sometimes can get a little stinky. Yeah. Sometimes kimchi can get a little stinky, depending on what you put in it. This little uh, tube here is not vaping. <laughs> no, no, it's the opposite of it. So what it's doing here is that this is actually going to. Oh snap! Um, so this is going to filter out any um, odors that are coming out of the. Oh, uh, that the is kraut. So, handy. so if you have it in your refrigerator or you have it in your. Um, you know, in your den or wherever, like a cool dry place is yeah. out, it's not going to stink up the room. That's really important. Now, now you may have noticed a few things. Uh, normally when we come on to the show for WTF, we want to show you, our, you know, our favorite for doing a certain thing. We knew we wanted to do a ferment mm -hmm. uh, episode. We couldn't pick a favorite lid because they both are fantastic yes. um, for slightly different reasons. I know one of the other reasons you like Sterilock too is um, because you do a uh, different kind of brewing because you do beer brewing. Yeah. They're, they've got where the crowdsource only has, I, I believe they only have lids for wide mouth jars. Yep, the, so the Sterilock comes in, in the smaller mouth jars. And, and also for brewing, I'll start with a normal um, yeah. uh, airlock, and then I'll just switch over to the Sterilock once I know it's done. Uh, it's first fermentation, I switch over to the Sterilock and I allow the yeast to do its job, clean up the beer and whatnot. It just takes up less room. I don't have to worry about that if I, you know, because I have a conical fermenter, yeah. uh, which means I have to dump through the bottom, oh. and that allows a lot of oxygen to come out, and sometimes it'll suck in the, the sanitizing liquid. I don't want that in my yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is safe, but I don't need all that any extra water or any extra flavors going into it, so yeah. I just like this because it allows the oxygen to come out, but it doesn't, I'm sorry, the CO2 to come out, but not, no oxygen to go back in. Um, two things I do want to point out, you mentioned pickle pebbles. Yes. With the kraut source, I'm going to pull this off here. You can see this little tab right here. That's actually a spring-loaded plunger to keep my contents down. That is a benefit of using the kraut yeah. source because it has a built-in plunger. And with the uh, the Sterilock, I like to throw these, and you can see they're little glass discs. They're lead-free. They're they're uh, non-porous and they're food grade. So I put those right on top of my uh, uh, pickles inside the Sterilock jars yeah. and that holds everything down and allows the the water to cover them completely because sometimes if you get a little bit that comes out it's not as pickled as the other and it'll have a different texture they're very pretty as well so these are these are non-porous lead free yep. they're, they're, they're for pickling um, they 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 don't don't try to use them to do things like weigh stuff down in the oven though you can sanitize them like normal um, they're yep. they're very cool yeah you can so. sanitize them but yeah I've had people try and uh, put them in the oven to hold down paper so. and, and they just crack it's not like they explode or anything yeah. they just crack and, and, but and then you can't use them because now they're porous they're absolutely gorgeous um but to your point if you have uh the crowdsource kit you don't need that because you've got the spring to keep it down so either way just know if you get the sterilock you'll also want a way to keep some stuff down in the yep. liquid um what are some things that can kind of go since it's, we're talking about not just this but we're also talking about uh you know uh, fermentation in general what are a few things to watch out for that can go wrong because fermentation's been around for forever, but um, 
it's still something you can mess up, right? Yeah, I mentioned before, you know, yeast that comes on top. You can, as long as it's not a complete layer of yeast, you can generally scrape off a little bit, add yeah. a little bit more salt, and it'll be fine. Uh, but if you're getting molds, white, uh, bluish green, black, like I said before, just throw it away. Uh, when in doubt, throw it out because yeah. you don't want to make anyone sick. Those are the real issues uh, that you could end up with these, you know, yeah. end up getting with, with ferments of, of any type. Yeah. So just make sure that sanitation is on point, you know, um, have a, some vinegar and a little squirt bottle. Squirt bottles are like a dollar sure, sure. at, you know, at any store. Um, you can get uh, a nice, you know, food grade sanitizer, yeah. hot boiling water sanitizers. So just make sure you have those things handy just to make sure everything's sanitized. Wear gloves because, you know, even if you wash your hands, there could be, so you pick up some some bacteria from here to there, and boom! Now you have uh, a bunch of wasted product. And and this is used to was initially used to have food over the winter. So if we if you have a garden and you want to pickle stuff, you don't want to be throwing that stuff away. Cause yeah. If you spent all the time you know growing it and making sure it was beautiful. So. Yeah. Now if you've sanitized and you're using an airlock lid of some sort, you've pretty much got rid of most of that, uh, well, most of the risk of any of that happening, so you're probably fine. Um, just watch out for those warning signs. Now, we were also talking about, by the way, um, can you speak a little bit to this specific, because you're probably familiar with kimchi, but um, can you speak a little bit to this specific kimchi? Because this is very you and very yeah. New England, which so, is weird for a Korean. It is very, very New England. Uh, so. Kimchi can be made out of anything. Uh, so I, I went to the farmer's market a few months ago when I made this kimchi and, and I got some fiddleheads and I got some some ramps and I got some, uh, I think patty pan squash was also there. And, and you can take the basic kimchi recipe, take a cabbage that's local. Yeah. If someone's growing cabbage, pick it up, wash it and you can use it. It doesn't always have to be Napa cabbage. Yeah. You can turn anything into kimchi because it's really about the paste and the process. Mm. So there's a recipe on blog.modernistpantry.com that you can take those weights for any vegetable uh, and then you know s supplement with whatever you have I yeah. if your area has a, a certain amount of vegetables at a certain time of year why are you going to go to the, the regular grocery store and spend money on something that's being shipped in just get some really nice inexpensive um, product and you can yeah. make a really beautiful kimchi that is unique to you uh, we were kind of joking I opened this earlier and and we were smelling it and it the the flavor and the aroma is nothing like a normal kimchi because this smells kind of like uh, pizza combos or, or <laughs> artificial pizza flavor, but yeah. it smells amazing. And, uh, and I'll make some probably kimchi ketchup with it later. That's probably going to blow, is blow your mind. That is also fantastic. Yes. Um, so yeah, and, and without going too far down the, the, the kimchi hole, although th that used to be a thing, um, the idea that you can take this and make it extremely local if you're a farm-to-table restaurant or something like that, it doesn't hold you from using uh, this amazing recipe. In fact, that kind of is what made it most exciting for me. I love kimchi, but when I saw you make this um, with so much distinctly local, not yeah. just local versions of, you know, what was yeah, in the down traditional the street recipe. Local. Yeah, yeah I, I think it was fantastic. And that was one of the things that when we said, you know, well, we're going to do a fermentation episode, I'm like, the kimchi trick, where you just make it with whatever's local, I think is um, phenomenal and shouldn't be overlooked as, as an exciting way to use your new uh, crowdsource or sterilock kit, uh, crowdsource, mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the crowdiness. Um, what are a few other things? So we've talked about, we also talked about the pickle pebbles, which, which we have on the list to go over. Um, that's an important piece. We talked about, oh, stepping away from kraut for a second, going to traditional pickles a bit. Um, you've also got a trick and an ingredient that we carry for getting a firmer pickle. Yes, yeah, so so either a calcium chloride or calcium hydroxide in a very small amount in some water, and you can find that at blog.monitorspantry.com uh, with the regular pickle, uh, pickled cucumber recipe, yeah. is it, it's a crisping bath. So a day before you make the pickles, soak them in, in this solution, and then when you're making the pickles, they will stay crunchier for longer. The calcium chloride helps you know draw out a little, little bit of liquid initially, and then it makes it nice and crisp. Yeah, and uh, one other thing to watch out for, I kind of just remembered when we were talking about, not all mason jars are food safe. Yes. That's so weird to say, um, but it's true. Where mason jars are becoming so in vogue as a houseware item, it's getting easier and easier and easier to find otherwise really nice uh, jars that have been tinted or decorated or yeah, spray painted, uh, all sorts of different yeah, things. Yeah, the, happen, the, so. the cool metallics on the inside. Those you don't want to mess around with. Get yourself the traditional, I think all of these here happen to be ball jars. Yep. Um, get yourself good, make sure it's food safe. Uh, if you bought it from a food place, you're probably fine. If you got it from a craft store that's closed on Sundays, you should probably not use that for food things. 
if go you're there. at all nervous about finding the right jar, uh, I would say go with the Kraut Source. This is a kit right here that comes, oh, yeah. com comes with a jar, comes with the lid, also comes with some recipes. And even on the back, it kind of gives you just a basic, like, pickling is very easy. If you have the sanitation down and you have the method down, you can add anything. And this yeah. just shows you some spices that you can add to get some really amazing... Uh, and there goes our ND filter. That's fine. We're just a little bit more blue now. That's all. <laughs> um, the white balance will catch up. So yeah, and I, I, this crowdsource kit is really cool. Um, if you haven't heard of crowdsource before, I haven't seen them. It's a it's a great company. It's a wonderful product. The attention to detail is great. It happens to be beautiful. This is, as I'm corrected, not a shot glass. No. Um, but even little things that they do, like there's a um, the insert in here for the packaging material is um, is one of those papers that's impregnated with the seeds, so you can like plant the packaging yes, material. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just the little touches like that. It's a it's a fun product. It's a it's a great gift for yourself or uh, whatever. I also like that you, you had noted it's the kit. You can't go wrong with the kit because it's everything you need. And if you don't think you're going to be doing an entire garden's worth of kimchi, you just want to experiment with it. Uh, the kit here happens to be a phenomenal way to start. You don't have to do the kit though. Yes. You can also just buy the um, just the top. Yeah, you absolutely can. And one last thing, we did koji a while ago here on yeah. WTF and even though you know my miso was, was salted heavily and weighed down I still threw it in at like a half gallon mason jar and I still put yeah. a Sterilock on it just to keep any excess oxygen out from you know getting in contact with it it's just like it's it's a safety barrier yeah it's funny I, I I make my own kombucha and I've had enough of them go a little bad that now I'm like why have I not been using this because the kombucha they're just like yeah. damp towel and put it on and like that's the safest thing possible, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, now, now I feel like an actual goofball for on almost live TV, figuring this out in real time. That's where I've gone wrong. <laughs> I followed the internet recipe too much. I think we covered pretty much everything that we, we need to. Yeah, look, if you're looking to get into fermentation, there's no better place to start than with proper sterilization and the right equipment. It also happens to be the safer way to start. Um, and that's true whether you're going for krauts or, or kimchi or pickles. Uh, it's pretty fantastic stuff, worth doing, whether you're making something for, for your guests in a restaurant or food service setting, uh, or you just want something that you can make for yourself from your own garden, your own farmer's market to have and share with your family. Um, these are fantastic, fantastic kits. You can get them at modernistpantry.com. And we referenced a bunch of different <laughs> recipes and stuff today. I'm, I can't even remember them all, but you'll find them all pretty easily at blog modernistpantry.com or if you find yourself on modernistpantry.com I think it says like how to use or something like that at blog.modernistpantry.com you'll find a few things you'll find recipes like the ones we talked about today and you'll find recipes that are completely different from that there's a pretty big range as you'd expect from somebody with access to all these ingredients and toys you'll also find ask a chef it's where viewers like you our customers and culinary professionals ask Scott really weird questions we pick the weirdest our favorite or sometimes even the most common uh, and Scott answered them in gory 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 detail. Um, we've covered some crazy stuff there. Sometimes it's just a really interesting read. The one I'm remembering right now is uh, about using transglutamase to stick together octopus, but it turns out you may not need it because of octopus gelatin. It's a weirdly interesting deep. read. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's a deep cut, so check that out. And you'll also find there the backlogs of WTF. At the bottom of any page at blog.monitorspantry.com, you'll find a subscribe link. Now, if enough people subscribe, don't have to give this long speech anymore. The subscribe link will let you get an email that comes out about once every other week. Um, and that's where you're gonna find the paper falling down behind me. That's where you're gonna find recipes, uh, the WTF episodes. It makes sure that you don't miss a thing, but we don't over email you because your time's valuable and we just wanna give you that inspiration eh, when, when you want it. So thank you so much for joining us here on WTF where we transform food in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Mark Fershat. And I'm Scott Guerin. Have a fantastic day.